23-year-old self-made multimillionaire Eamon Gadji is crushing YouTube with his insanely good videos. He has all kinds of stuff like this in his videos, which he very likely has a team of editors and graphics guys creating an After Effects. But I'm going to show you how to do some pro-level stuff in CapCut, which is free. That can't possibly be true. Bookmark this video so you can go back to it and master the concepts I show you in this video. Time to put your bookmark in, Mr. Brady. Once you master these concepts, you'll be able to level up your videos so you too can go viral like Eamon Gadget. You're gonna be huge! First, we need some cool graphics to animate. I can't draw a jack, so I had CapCut's AI create them for me. Now let's jump into CapCut and create some After Effects animation. Here's the street I created in CapCut. I'm gonna drag it to the timeline. Here's the car I created. I'm gonna throw it on top. The street is pretty wide here, so I'm gonna scale it up. I can just click on scale and drag it up to fill the screen. Let's go ahead and drag the street out to about six seconds and drag the car out to about the same, just so we have a little bit longer sequence to play with. And I'm gonna fill up the screen by using my favorite keystroke, which is Shift Z. Now Shift Z does the same thing as this little ruler here, which fills the screen up. So if you're like zoomed out like this a bunch and you want it to fill the whole screen, you can either click this or you can hit Shift Z. Remember that. It's it's important. We can easily animate this car by positioning the car where we want it to start, setting a position keyframe right here, and then moving the playhead to the end of the sequence, moving the car to here, and another keyframe is automatically set right here. And now, hey, we have a car going across the screen, but you know, it looks pretty cheesy. We can make this a lot better. I'm just going to undo all of that by hitting Command Z on my keyboard. What if we could have the wheels turning, but it's a static image. How do you do that? This is pretty cool, actually. What we're going to do is just cut out one of the wheels. And to do that, we're going to click on this image of the car, click on this crop icon here, and we're going to shrink it way down as small as it gets and position it over one of the wheels. And you want it dead center and you'll see why in a second. And you want to make sure that we're able to see at least all of the metal part, all of the spokes of the wheel. And we're good because this is actually as small as this crop feature gets us. So I'm going to hit confirm. Now we've got a big ugly wheel in the center of the screen. What do we do? We go over here to mask and we select circle and we scale it so that it is just big enough to cover the spokes, which is right about there. We can add a little bit of a feather to this since it's not perfect. The important thing is that we keep this centered. So we're not going to move the mask over at all. Otherwise, it'll make it off center later. So we're just going to feather it a tiny bit. So it kind of blends in with the rest of the wheel a little bit. So just a feather of, of one. Now we are going to scale this guy down by clicking on basic and scaling it down. And now we're going to bring down another copy of the car, make it the same length as the original. And we're going to put the wheel on top. Next, we're going to position the wheel directly over its original position, which was right back here. And to help it line up completely, because it's kind of hard to see if we've got it scaled right, we're just going to click on opacity here and bring it down a little bit so that we can match it a little bit better. And if it's a tiny bit bigger, that should be OK. This looks pretty good. I'm going to change the opacity back up to 100. Next, we want to animate this wheel so it looks like the wheel is rolling with the car. To do that, we're going to position the playhead at the beginning of the sequence. We're going to select the wheel layer. We're going to set a keyframe for the rotate property right here then position the playhead at the end of the sequence. And I always go to the end of the sequence, then I hit the arrow key back to go minus one so I can see the keyframe. And now because I have a keyframe set at the beginning of the sequence, if I change the rotate property by either physically rotating this, look what it does, it creates another keyframe. Or by typing in a value. In this case, I'm just gonna type in something like minus 720. So it creates two full revolutions. And what does that look like? We go to the beginning of the sequence, look at this. We got a wheel turning. Now, it's kind of hard to see what that looks like with the box around. It looks kind of weird. So we're just going to click outside of this actual layer and it makes the box go away. And now when we go like this, like, oh, it looks like the car is going forward, except it's not moving forward. Now we've got one wheel that works perfectly here. So we need another wheel. One trick I use all the time in Adobe Premiere and here to duplicate a layer is to click on the layer I want to duplicate, then hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And then I drag this layer up and bam, we have another layer. Now we have two of these wheels. So I'm just going to position this wheel at the front of the vehicle right here. Looks pretty good there. And I'm going to click off this clip so the box goes away. 
And now we've got two wheels going forward. What? Now, how do I make the whole car move together with the wheels? Because I've got three layers. I don't want to animate them one at a time. I want them to go together. So what I'm going to do is highlight all three of these layers. Then I'm going to right click on them and choose Create Compound Clip. Now, anything I do to this vehicle is going to move the vehicle with the wheels. So obviously, it's too big for this. So we're first going to scale it down. And that looks pretty good right there. Then we're going to position it in the road here, maybe a little bit bigger so it's got some perspective. And then I'm going to position it where I want this vehicle to start. So I'm going to put it back here. And I'm going to set a keyframe for position. Remember, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. So I'm going to check the keyframe here where the car is going to start. Then I'm going to go to the end of the sequence and then back one frame so I can actually see the keyframe. And now I'm going to just drag the car to where I want it to end up. Now, so it doesn't end up, you know, floating in the buildings and being all over the place. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then drag it forward and it keeps it straight until it's just kind of off the screen. And now we have, after we click off of this, I'm going to start here and what? That's, that's pretty great, but we're gonna make it even better. I was able to make this background longer than 16 by nine. If I scale it down, you can see that it's a longer background. So I'm gonna scale it back all the way up. And if you aren't able to find or create one bigger than 16 by nine, just blow it up so it's bigger. So you've got some background here and some background here. Now we want it to look like the background is moving also. So it looks more realistic. To do that, we position the playhead at the beginning of the sequence and we put the background where we want it to start. In this case, we want the background to start right here. Remember, hold down the shift key so it doesn't go out of place. Then set another position keyframe right here. Go to the end of the sequence, minus one, and drag the background back this way until we get to here. Remember, hold down that shift key. And now we have, what? Wait, see how I got that moving? Remember to always uncheck it so you can see it so you don't have to see those white lines. And now it's looking, whoa, even better. But wait, we can even add another kind of little flare into here. What do we want the vehicle to kind of slow down in the middle of the scene? How do we do that? Well, let's position a playhead where we want it to slow down. So we'll say right about here. Click here, set a keyframe for position again, then move forward maybe, I don't know, like that far. To make it slow down here, we just drag the car back. Hold down the shift key, drag the car back a little bit so that it slows down in the middle and look what it did, it created another keyframe. Let's go ahead and make this full screen and see how it looks. Whoa! It was a little bit jerky at the keyframe, so one tiny little tweak we can make to make it a tiny bit better is click in the timeline, right click and choose show keyframe animation and the X property going side to side is the only one we changed. We want to smooth out that linear motion where it kind of slowed down and sped back up. To do that, we click on the X property right here. We choose this down arrow. We click this first keyframe and we check this smooth out icon here, this auto curve. And then we check one right here for this one as well. And then we close this by right clicking and choosing hide keyframe animation. And one more time, let's see if this is a little bit better. How, how is that? You can tweak this further by clicking in the timeline and moving the keyframes closer or farther apart to slow things down or speed things up. You can also mess with those auto curve graphs. So you can tweak it to your liking, but there's really no end to what you can do right within CapCut, a free program. Now, if you don't have assets like this, a car, a building, you can just go into CapCut AI and create them. And I have a video that'll teach you exactly how to do that right here. So go ahead and watch this video right now to learn how to create images out of thin air just by typing within CapCut. Do as he says. It will blow, 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 blow your mind.